Let's jump in right into it. The Arizona Cardinals. Let's talk about our team predictions. Guys, you ready? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's, let's do start it. With the quarter, quarterback position. Kyler Murray. In his second season, Kyler threw 558 times for 3,971 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. He added 133 rushing attempts for 819 and 11 rushing touchdowns. That gave him 390.74 fantasy points. Good enough for 24.42 points per game or quarterback five and uh, in points per game, quarterback two on the season. So definitely had a great year. Let's talk about Kyler moving forward. So I have Kyler throwing about 100 more times in 2021. I think this offense is going to be a little bit better. I think they're going to have a little more possession and they get an extra football game. 650 mm-hmm. passes for 410 completions, 4,370 <clears throat> yards. That's where I have him finally breaking that 4,000 yard marker. Also adding 150 rushes for 900 rushing yards and seven touchdowns. 399 total fantasy points is almost exactly where he landed last year. I have him as my quarterback to Tyler. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I like Kyler Murray. I think he could be a quarterback, maybe not next year, but in the next few years, you know, get a thousand yards with that extra game added. Uh, he could be one of those quarterbacks that passes for maybe 4,000 yards and rushes for a thousand, uh, which hasn't mm-hmm. been done very many times in, in the NFL. And, uh, you know, him and Cliff uh, Kingsbury, they, they have a great relationship. So the more weapons they've added, they add James Conner to the mix, a, a former Pittsburgh running back who didn't have a great offensive line in Pittsburgh. Uh, Arizona has a pretty good offensive line, so I think he'll uh, put up decent numbers. Uh, and then also De- uh, DeAndre Hopkins, of course, he's one of the best, if not the best wide receiver in all of football. Then you add in A.J. Green, who's kind of, been forgotten about the last two years uh you remember aj green and julio jones were compared at the hip for a few years there uh and then aj green just hasn't been able to stay healthy look out for aj green to maybe be one of the comeback players of the year this year he gets out of the environment in Mm -hmm. cincinnati Uh, i really like that addition adding him to a it seems like they have about 10 wide receivers on their (laughs) roster christian kirk uh, you know, uh, Andy Isabella. I mean, they have all kind of guys on that roster. And Larry Fitzgerald did retire, correct? Uh, he no, he didn't. Never, no, he's coming back. No, nope, not that either. They they he hasn't decided yet. Okay, well, I mean, who knows what he'll do? Uh, him in the offense, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, the top five, maybe top ten wide receiver all time. We'll see what he's do. Maybe he gets you know added in halfway through the season, takes a little extra vacation, comes out fresh legs last you know, six, seven games of the season if the Arizona Cardinals yep. are in the hunt. Absolutely. So I, love I do that. like Kyler Murray and this offense and uh, definitely could be a top three to five quarterback uh, in the 2021 season. Well, um, Fantasy Football Calculator um, has Kyler Murray as the number three quarterback and his ADP is at, is sitting around 405. Looking at Fantasy Football Calculator, his it, when it started, when the, when Mark mock drafts started back in January, uh, because sometimes maybe I guess believe it or not, mock drafts people do it. People yeah. mock drafts six, yeah. seven, eight, ten times. Mock, yeah. he, he, he started out as right he now. started as pick three hundred five. He has since dropped down a full round to pick four hundred five. However, in some mock drafts, he has, and I'm I'm going to assume that this is two quarterback league. Um, that some of these mock drafts might be, but Kyler Murray um, a, a has been drafted as high as 101 and as low as 505. Yeah, so, so that's his, so that's his um, prediction of outcomes. So yeah, what I think about that is this: I think that there is no longer a big differentiation between Mahomes, Josh Allen, Kyler, and Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. I in the past I had put them in separate tiers. They're all in the same tier for me now. And oh, yeah. any one of them could be the number one quarterback at any given time. It's no longer Mahomes and then Lamar and then everyone else. It's They're all together for me. When you ask if I'm buying or selling, I'm a late round quarterback guy. So I like Kyler. I like where he's going. I will not be personally buying, but I still think he's a value where you're getting him. Yeah, and I uh, and you know I'm I'm buying him as a QB one. You know I think he's going to finish as that top two three quarterback. But his ADP at four oh five is just too rich for me, especially when you can get quarterbacks um, that that still have the same potential as Kyler Murray in later rounds. 
Um, you know, it, 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 now if I, if he was at the lower end of his ADP, which is five Oh five and I have my, and I, and I have my two running backs and two wide receivers, then I may, um, then I may go after him if he, if he is there. But, um, other than that, Joe Burrow at seven or seven Oh six sign me up. I I, I don't need Kyler Murray. How do you feel about it, Tyler? I just got one question. When you say round five, oh five, that's round five, pick five. Is that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm looking at, so um, what I, what Let's I'm looking sure. at, I'm looking at fantasy football calculator while we're, while we're doing this. Um, and, and so I have it set to 12 team leagues. And mm-hmm. so, and so everything will in, in half PPR. So okay. everything, so I'll be giving the, the ADP from their high end and their low end as well as where they're currently averaging out at. Gotcha. And I, I'm more of a quarterback later because there's so many guys in the league. There's probably 18 quarterbacks who you could have in fantasy and still win your league. I feel like that that's kind of the number. You, you could have, you know, a guy who averages 15 points and you stack up at running back or wide receiver and you win the league because you ended up taking a guy instead of getting a quarterback. So I'm more of a, you know, seventh round or later to me in a 10 team league is kind of yeah. what I try to do. Um, but it just depends if you're able to get a Mahomes or you're able to get a Kyler Murray maybe in the fourth round, fifth round, and you still have two running backs, two wide receivers. I'm always a Travis Kelsey guy. I'd go for Travis Kelsey as early as possible. I'm talking second round, maybe <laughs> or late first round, just because if you have a tight end, uh, you know, who's going to score more points than the other guy's tight end every single week. And then you can grab a quarterback later. So that's just how I draft. It comes to strategy. You're not passing on them because you're passing on the talent. You're just not going to own many. And that's absolutely fine. But we do have to move on because we are on a little bit of a time crunch. We have James Conner. Running back James Conner. Had 169 carries for 721 yards, six touchdowns in 2020. He had 35 receptions for 215 yards and zero receiving touchdowns. He was running back 25 on the season. Season. Um, and in points per game was even lower than that. Mm-hmm. Connor, for me, he's talented, but he really only adds one dimension when you have a guy like Chase Edmonds also on the team, and that's what the story is going to be here for me. Um, Kenny and Drake carried the ball, 239 carries, 31 targets. I think Connor sees almost an exact replica of that workload. I have him today at 225 rushes for 922.5 yards, still missing the 1,000-yard marker, and eight rushing touchdowns. Also adding 38 receptions for 257 and two receiving touchdowns. What that means for us, 197 fantasy points, 12 fantasy points per game, running back nine in total points, running back 16 in points per game. That's Mm -hmm. where that would put him over the 2020 season. Yeah, um, and Fantasy Football Calculator has him at running back 35 and currently sitting at 710. Uh, set, um, round seven, pick ten as his current ADP, yeah. um, but he's being drafted as low as the end of the ninth round. So that, so um, I mean, when we talk about buy or sell here, I mean, especially for zero running back leagues, I mean, that's a that's an absolute buy for me because you know that it that because 12 point 12 fantasy points per game that's running back two numbers and you know that that's and that's mid-tier running back two numbers if and if he can get that sign me up for it i like that a lot too i didn't think i was gonna like james connor heading into this season but once i statted him out i kind of saw hey workload matters more than a lot of other things sometimes and i think he's gonna get a lot of work and i just Mm -hmm. he has the carries he's gonna get it chase edmonds was a guy i've liked a lot of times we're gonna talk about him next but i don't think they're they're different running backs they're not gonna eat into each other's work very much i think they're gonna complement each other very nicely um if you're going i do not ever do this but if you're going like zero rb strategy and it's you know the fourth fifth sixth round and you got james connor I'll take him. I, I will take yeah. him on my team. He will be a flex yeah. backup. And you know what the ceiling is. The ceiling is he can do everything. Yeah. And um, and here's the thing. Here are running backs that are being drafted ahead of him. Who would you, you know, tell me who you would take. Here are the five running backs being drafted ahead of him. A.J. Dillon, Mike Davis, Kenyon Drake, Jeffrey Wilson, Leonard Fournette. I mean, I, Bob, I know, I know you'll take before I know James you'll Connor. Take, maybe I think Mike, Mike Davis. Davis has a little bit of potential. I'm gonna talk about Fair it. enough. 
Mm -hmm. and we'll talk about Mike Davis later on. (laughs) Um, His his highest draft, his height, the highest he's been drafted is the end of the fifth round, by the way, for James Conner. Yeah, he's going at 710 for me, seventh round, 10th pick. I'm all over it. Yeah. Tyler, what do you think? Yeah, if hey, if he uh, actually lives up to those projections you have, hey, I'll take that all day as a running back too. Uh, I mean, those projections, hey, if he can, you know, stay right around that, I would take that all day. Sign me up. I think he would as well. And the Arizona Cardinals. So uh, I was I was listening very closely to your projections. I feel like if he gets 900 something rushing yards, you know, adds in a couple touchdowns, I feel like that is a win for. Uh, both Connor and his uh, and his Arizona Cardinals, who took a chance on him uh, and, after a subpar year last year with the Steelers. Yeah, and the last thing that I want to say is is that that year that Le'Veon Bell set out and Connor was you know played most of the games. Mm-hmm. You know he he was he was actually a good receiving back. On top of that, the receiving went down this past year. Um, and, and also before Connor had that had that leg injury. You know, he was actually, you know, he was actually on pace for RB1 numbers, but that's the, you know, injuries happen, you know, but anyway, we, we here nor there. let's move and talk about his uh, tandem lineup mate. And that is Chase Edmonds. Again, I think they complement each other very well. I expect <laughs> Chase Edmonds to get a lot of the uh, pass catching work. Last season, Chase Edmonds rushed 97 times for 448 in one touchdown. He caught 53 of his 67 targets for 402 and four touchdowns while sitting most of the season behind Kenyon Drake. He was running back 28 in 2020. So not a top. He's a running back three by those metrics. But mm-hmm. let's talk about how he's going to be used this season. I think on a he's on a pass-heavy team, mm-hmm. and I see him as the, the true 1B. I don't see him as you know just the third down back. He's going to get some carries, but he's going to get a lot of third down work. For me, I have him at 150 rushes for 675 and six touchdowns, although I think six touchdowns is going to be generous when they put Connor in the box, but we're going to leave that there for now. Um, I also have 75 targets for 60 receptions, 480 yards, and three touchdowns. That puts him at a 1,000-yard total season, Mm -hmm. 200 fantasy points per game. uh, 200, excuse me, not that many. 200 fantasy points. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. 12 fantasy points per game puts him exactly the same spot that I have James Conner on my board. I did not do that intentionally. He's running back nine on the season, running back 12 in points per Mm. game. That is hefty. Mm. Yeah, and fantasy football calculator actually has him ahead of Conner at running back 27. Um, His ADP sits at 604. Um, And yeah, that... The, I don't know, like, because he's being drafted as low as 709, and he's being drafted as high as 401. I mean, for me, for me personally, he's, he's in, when he had a chance to be, um, I, I'm going to sell, by the way, this is one of the few players I'm selling on. He's had multiple op- opportunities um, to show that he's the guy, whether when David Johnson was there or Kenyon Drake was there and they were injured. And, you know, he's just been, he's just been cr- incredibly inefficient at six, at six Oh four. It's too rich for me. Um, because at 604, I'm still looking for those upside players, and I don't see much upside with him. Um, you know, in, in, in you know, especially when you can get James Conner in a later round, I think that that I think that that would be a better value. And one more stat, uh, you know, while you were talking about the six touchdowns, maybe too generous. Do you know how many carries um, uh, Chase Edmonds has gotten his entire career inside the 10 yard line? I have no idea, but I assume it's going to be extraordinarily low because of the way you framed that question. <laughs> One. One. He's only gotten in in his entire career, even the two games where he was the clear-cut starter. Yeah. He has only gotten Probably. one carry inside the one. Because he's, he's not that guy, and Arizona Cardinals aren't a team that gets inside the one. They're, they're, that, that's not how <laughs> they play. So I guess that's good for me. Um, w- the way I see these two guys is maybe it, you're going the sixth round, you're going as you're running back three, if you've taken guys that are pretty solid with not a lot of risk, I'm going to take Chase Edmonds. Take take a shot for the fences because he could put up six, seven, eight hundred yards. He could put up Kamara numbers in the catch in the pass game, but his floor is also really three well. points a game. Three points a game. So um, if I have a lot of risk in the running back department, 
I'm going to take James Conner. And I do like both these guys, but they're they're very, I like to mediate my risk and I'm going to use them appropriately there. Uh, Tyler, what do you think? Yeah, I think Edmonds is more of a kind of running back two kind of flex, especially in a PPR league. You know, if he can catch 50, 60 balls in a PPR league, one point, half a point, uh, I feel like he can really be a flex play. I mean, he had a couple big games last year, I remember. I mean, I think he scored over 25 points maybe two, three times last year. He had some. He had a couple big games. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if he can stick to your projections, he'll have a hell of a year. Um, so, yeah, running back two, kind of flex play for me. Um, probably going to draft a guy like him maybe a little bit later than you had him projected, maybe eighth, ninth round. Um, but he could be a guy, especially with uh, James Conner's injury history. Now we got to bring that into play. If yeah. if Conner were to go down, then Chase Edmonds could be that top twelve running back, like you said. So um, I mean, that's of course you don't want injuries to happen, but uh, you know Conner's had some injuries in his career. So that's uh, I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to. I'm just going to push back by by saying this. There uh, last season, last season there were um, there were only two running backs who played all 16 games. Mm-hmm. So, uh, two two starting running backs that played all 16 games. Mo- the average the average amount of games for a running back to play is between is between 12 and 14. Yeah. Then you got the extra game this year as well. So mm-hmm. um, you know maybe if you get a James Conner late in the seventh round, maybe you get Edmonds. You know the next pick or you know, you go ahead and, and get both of those players. So, you know, that could be something for fantasy players as well to do. Uh, and you should always handcuff your running backs. You know, you get mm-hmm. a, uh, you know, a, a Zeke Elliott, you need to get his backup as well. So, you know, that that's very important in, in fantasy football. Now, we got to quickly go over. I know we're taking up a little more time than we want to, but, hey, we're talking about some a great team here at the Arizona Cardinals. And we're going to talk about a great player in DeAndre Hopkins. At 160 targets, which is about 10 a game for 115 receptions, 1,407 <laughs> yards and six touchdowns last season. Um, that's 230.3 half PPR points, 14.4 average points per game. Landed him eighth on the season. He was uh, eighth on the season for points per game, fifth on the season as wide receiver number five. Now, mm-hmm. I think it's just about the same, but I think his efficiency is going to go down just a little because he was a little unreal last year. He's getting up there in age. He is a year older, but he gets an extra game. I think his efficiency is going to go down with 155 targets for 105 receptions. Have him at 1,260 yards, nine touchdowns. That's going to land him 233 fantasy points per game. Uh, Fantasy points. I I can't get that right today. And 14 fantasy points per game. These numbers will put him exactly where he was in 2020. I think he's a knockout pick to be wide receiver five in mm-hmm. that five to eight range for points per game. Yeah, and Fantasy Football Calculator has you backed up on that. Um, he's going as the wide receiver number four, um, and he is sitting currently at 203 in ADP, and his lowest that he's been drafted is the 209. So that's exactly where we want him. Um, he's being drafted as a top three or four, even though we have him as a five to eight guy. Is that Tyler, just because of how steady he is year in and year out, you can just rely on Deandre Hopkins. Yeah. And I actually think Hopkins going to be a little better than the projections. I really do. I feel like he could definitely be a 1500 yard, 10 touchdown guy, uh, would put him kind of anywhere between the two and three. If he stays healthy, of course, it's always a risk with T's with these players, how physical the game is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they could always end, end up on the injury report. But uh, I feel like year two with Kyler Murray, he's only going to flourish more, especially in this Cliff Kingsbury offense. Of course, you remember the Buffalo touchdown last year, the Hail Mary. Uh, that was a great, great play by DeAndre Hopkins. I honestly mm-hmm. think he could go for 10 touchdowns, 1,500 yards, a little bit better than your projections. Uh, and and I would not be shocked at all. Uh, yeah. I'd be a, he'd be a guy who I'd look for, you know, Devonte Adams probably would be the number one wide receiver for me. Then maybe a Tyree kill. And then, you know, Deandre Hopkins right there with those guys. So second round, probably early second round, mid to second round, you know, would not be a shocker. There may be a guy who could take him late first, but he's an early second round guy for me. And if you get him as your uh, wide receiver one, I feel like you'll be very happy on the season. Yeah, and and um, I'm a buy on him if he's there. If, if, if unless there's a really good running back there, 
Um, I'm taking I'm, if I'm sitting there at the beginning of the second round and Nuke is there, I'm taking him because until those wheels fall off, I'm buying hard on him. You know, he's not known just for his speed. He is he is known for also being physical and huge. The Hale Murray that that was just mentioned, he had three guys plastered over him and he still made the darn catch. Yeah, his hands so, are huge. His hands yeah, are it, it, huge. so if he's sitting there at round two, um, I'm just I'm just gonna I'm seriously gonna give him consideration over over other running backs. Absolutely, I th- I don't think we need to talk much about DeAndre Hopkins. We know yeah, where he yeah. is. We know he is. Let's move on. <laughs> he is who he is. Christian Kirk. 2020 Christian Kirk saw 79 targets for 621 yards, six touchdowns. Um, he also saw a downtick in almost every metric except yards per reception. He was wide receiver 50 in half PPR. Things weren't looking good last year for Christian Kirk, and they're not looking any better with the addition of the next guy. We're going to talk about AJ Green, and we still haven't talked about Larry Fitzgerald and whether he's coming back or not. This is a true two mouths to feed. I always say that mouths to feed isn't a real thing. Well, here it is <laughs> with Christian Kirk. I have him with 95 targets for 58 receptions, 783 yards, and five touchdowns. 137 point, points total lands him between T.Y. Hilton and Jamison Crowder in uh, 2020, and that would be around wide receiver 40. You guys buying or selling Christian Kirk? Um, Fantasy Calculator has him at wide receiver 56 and sitting at 1205 as his current ADP with him being drafted as low as around 13. Uh, I'm a sell. I mean, uh, yeah, with those with that ADP, it would it should be a buy for upside. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, you know, it, that's not even that's not even accounting for Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, and and, and, so, and the thing is, thing is, is I like Christian Kirk. I want him to succeed, but the fact is, is that he's been with Kyler Murray longer than than Nuke Hopkins. But when Kyler got um, Nuke, he hyper targeted him. So by eye test alone, I'm I'm selling because unless he has that, uh, I mean, unless he finally has that breakout year that we we're hoping for, but I just don't see it. He, we've been waiting for three years now. Tyler Christian Kirk. Yeah, he's a guy. I mean, he had a couple games last year. I remember the Monday night game against the Cowboys had that long touchdown uh, yep. against the Cowboys. He's a big play guy, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, a poor man's Will Fuller in a sense, has a, a bunch of big plays. Uh, but, yeah, I, I feel like if he does have 700 receiving yards, that's a plus uh, for him and the Arizona Cardinals. I would probably, you know, sell on him. Probably don't even – I'd be surprised if he gets a little over 500 yards uh, mm-hmm. receiving honestly um so yeah he's a guy who you know arizona has a ton of, of wide receivers and uh christian kirk may be a guy that arizona may be looking to, to uh, trade maybe at the trade uh trade deadline uh if he goes to another team he may have a little bit more value uh so look for christian kirk to you know just be okay uh you know top 40 to 50 receiver like you said yeah, and um, I'm looking. I'm looking at his stats right now. Um, and on uh, so Seattle, he had 18 point. This is half PPR. Uh, um, Dallas, he had 21.6. Seattle, 18.2, and um, Miami, he had 20.8 points. But uh, um, with the exception of Dallas, and also another good game that he had was Week 16 against the San Francisco 49ers. Um, you, you know. He, he, he had uh, against Seattle, he had eight targets and against Miami. He had eight targets against San Francisco. He had 10 targets and, and he caught five, five and seven of the, of those targets. So he has to, he, uh, you know, cause again, against the jets where he scored 9.3 points, he had seven targets, five receptions. You know, he has to, he has to have, uh, a wealth of targets coming his way because a lot of his other games, five, four, three, three, a bunch of threes yeah. and a bunch of sixes, and you know, he's just inefficient with his, with his target share. He's getting 60% of, he's catching 60% of his balls. He was getting like 17 yards per reception or something ungodly like that. But I think we have talked about Christian Kirk for longer than Christian Kirk will be on an NFL field in 2020. Exactly. So we will uh, adjust those as they happen um, in real time. But let's talk about the the real question here, and that is A.J. Green. Mm-hmm. A.J. Green last year, who the hell knows? I yeah. certainly do not. Um, I penciled him in. 
<clears throat> I penciled him in for 70 targets, 38 receptions, 473, and four touchdowns. I am highly, highly, highly debating going back and giving 30 of Christian Kirk's targets over to A.J. Green. Yeah, um, that, that, that's way too many targets, in my opinion. A.J. Green is going anywhere from, where is he, uh, wide receiver 70? Yeah, he's um, 70. As of today, I have him 90 fantasy points. Five points per game is near the realm of unusable. And for yeah. me, this is a how does the offseason play out? <laughs> Tyler, you froze for a minute. Let's yeah. let's throw it out there. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you right now, A.J. Green, I'm putting it out there right now. A.J. Green will be a top 30 receiver next year at least. And I really think A.J. Green's going to be better than that. A.J. Green, uh, you know, has been lost the last year. Cincinnati, um, and, and I'm telling you, A.J. Green still has the talent. If he can stay on the football field, I expect A.J. Green to be a good complement to DeAndre Hopkins. And uh, like I'm, I'm telling you, I feel like A.J. Green signing this one-year deal, uh, he's been humbled a little bit. He's always had a, uh, he's always been a guy who had the talent. So uh, he, he has good work ethic. He's, he's, he's never been a problem off the field, good locker room guy. I feel like right in with this Arizona Cardinals team. And if he can stay healthy – and play 15 to 16 games, I feel like he could easily, easily have 1,000 yards and, you know, six, seven touchdowns. <laughs> and, well, that's quite ADP. the butt you have there. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. butt it, is, it, it, is he ADP, healthy? Does he play? <laughs> his ADP is between the 14th and 15th round. If he is a top 40 receiver in the 14th or 15th round, you uh, you have won people championships. Yeah. You got to steal. I really think people are going, he's going to fall and I understand the fall, but the talent matches up. Let's remember what he did two years ago on Monday night football. had three touchdowns against the yeah. Baltimore Ravens. I mean, this is a guy not that far away. I know the wide receiver position. Uh, I know he's, he's taking a lot of hits. He's, he's done a lot of things, but I feel like him be, taking off the 19 season and then barely being used in the 20 season, he's going to be pretty fresh for a 32-year-old wide receiver, and uh, I expect him to put up some number. His failure, I think his with, failure with to Arizona. launch last Do season. Do not be shocked. Sorry, you just a little bit of lag there, Tyler. Um, I I agree. I like him. I like the talent, but I think we've all been burned enough, and I don't think anyone is going quite that I've high been, on him. I've been off the A.J. Green train for the last four years. It's about time everybody caught up with me. Let's move on because there is still one player we want to talk about, a player I set out very quickly. That is Rondell Moore added via the draft, a player who definitely needs to be talked about. I think if A.J. Green does go down again, it's certainly within his, the realm of possibility that that were to happen. Rondell Moore could be a guy to step up. As of right now with the current roster, uh, Rondell Moore with 45 targets for 29 receptions, 348 yards, and three touchdowns. That could change in an instant, but we just don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, he's not even, he's not even showing up on fantasy football calculator. So yeah, I mean, he's going to be an end of the end of the draft guy that you might want to take a flyer on. It's about Tyler, it. Something you talked about a lot with our college guys on the college show, Rondale Moore. How does he look for next year? He's a little five, seven foot gadget. I mean, I feel like he could be, he could be a guy uh, who could take some carries uh, out of the backfield, maybe return some punts or kicks, you know, something like that. Uh, look for a guy to maybe, if he has 500 all-purpose yards, you know, that'd be a good start to his career. Uh, look for him to maybe, you know, be one of those late-round flyers. Uh, but he's a guy I had pretty high. I had him as my number seven wide receiver, top 40 player on my big board. So I feel like he could he could find his niche in the NFL in the first few years. Uh, and what happens with Rondell Moore, he's in the right type of offense with Cliff Kingsbury and the way they distribute the football. So, uh, could be a guy who, you know, could get some carries, get some re receptions, and then also be a guy who uh, stars for you on special teams. 